In today's video, we're going to do a live demo of SQL Server availability groups in SSMS. So the motivation for, for this video was a comment from a channel viewer, and the comment was a live video in SQL Server Management Studio would be nice, just having the slides is a bit dull, and that is uh, totally true. And so let's, uh, let's dig in, and uh, we won't go through slides today. We're going to go into Management Studio and take a look at SQL Server availability groups, and I'll show you around. So here we are, we're in uh, SQL Server Management Studio, and we're gonna take a look at an availability group. So I've got an availability group right here, and as you can see, I've expanded these folders, and it shows you the uh, replicas that are involved with the availability group. So it identifies the primary and the secondary, or if you have multiple secondaries, they would all appear here as well. Uh, you also have a listing of all the databases that are in this availability group, and then you have the availability group listener. So we're going to drill into the properties here so you guys can see what uh, goes into the property settings of the availability group. And so you've got the name here. Uh, you've got a setting that uh, if you whether or not you want the synchronized secondaries to commit with the primary. And you've got some checks here for if you want to have uh, health check detection on or per database uh, distributed transaction coordinator support. But down here, this is where all of the settings are that you can modify. So first of all, you're going to see it's going to identify again which replica is the primary, what's the secondary. And then you've got availability nodes. And what this does is allow you to define if you want the nodes to be in synchronous commit or in asynchronous commit. So synchronous commit means when you commit on the primary, it's also going to, going to commit on any secondary that it has its synchronous mode assigned, or you can assign asynchronous mode. And typically you'll do that in cases where you've got maybe a wide area network or something like that, or you've got your nodes distributed kind of far apart, and you don't really want to have that uh, the primary to wait for the secondary to get the uh, transaction committed before it moves on. Now, in order, the next tier here we're going to talk about here is failover mode. So you can either go in automatic mode, which means that if the availability group detects that there's a problem with the primary, it will try and fail over automatically to the secondary. Your other choice is manual. So you do that in cases where you do not want an automatic failover to occur. In order to have automatic assigned, you need to have synchronous mode. It's a requirement because you can't have transactions that have not been committed uh, just sitting there waiting to be committed. You could lose data. And so that's, that's the reason for that restriction. And then you can assign your connections on the primary role. So in this case, we've got all allow all connections. The other one is only allow read write connections. And the next setting here is readable secondary. So this is a case where do you want to allow people to connect to your secondary and be able to read from it? Uh, so that that's very useful in cases where you want to maybe offload some of your processing to the secondary, you know, like reports or just read-only queries, ad hoc queries. Those are things you would do on a readable secondary. So we have that set to yes here. The next uh, is seeding mode. So this setting is used when you're adding new databases in the availability group. It's much easier when you have automatic seeding on. And then you've got some session timeouts. So we've got it set to 10 seconds here. And then your endpoint URL. There's a couple of other tabs here. Uh, you've got backup preferences. So where do you want your backups to occur? You can say, I prefer to have them occur on the secondary, or I only want them to occur on the secondary, or I only want them to be occurring on the primary, which is what we have set here. We've done that because we use uh, differential backups in addition to uh, full backups. So, and that allows uh, we that allows us to run like maybe a full backup once per week, and then incremental backups or differential backups during during the week. And so we're doing that on our primaries. Or the last setting here is any replica. Or you can say some uh, priority settings here, and we've just got them set to. 50-50, or if you want to exclude a replica. And by the way, you can have more than one uh, secondary. You can have, I believe, up to five secondaries, and they may even support more than that now. 
And then we've got permission here. We're not really setting anything in here, but there is something here that we can discuss, which is read-only routing. And for read-only routing, uh, this is where you would tell someone who connects uh, to uh, in a read-only mode. And so you can tell them, hey, I want if you're connecting in read-only, I want you to go to that secondary first uh, and then come to the primary or vice versa. So you have the, the choice of where to route users that declare that they're read-only uh, intent. So that's all the settings. Uh, we're going to just bring up the uh, dashboard now. And that will show you, basically, this is a very useful monitoring tool for your availability group. And so this is all green. This is how we want it to, this is how we want it to look. Uh, and so it's going to show you again, which is your primary replica, which your secondary replica, uh, what's the mode, the availability mode, failover mode, seating mode, and synchronization state. And in this case, everything's synchronized. And you'll have individual database status to look at here as well. So you've got every database that's in the availability group. And here I've got a couple of additional columns I've selected, estimated recovery time, which is zero, and estimated data loss. And so everything is in sync right now, looking good. And you can add and remove additional columns here. So there's a lot of other columns you could add if you wanted to monitor those particular metrics. Uh, if you wanted to actually fail over, you just come here, right click, you would click fail over. I'm not going to do it, um, but it will allow, it would basically say, hey, uh, first it's going to check to see if uh, that, that secondary uh, replica is uh, prepared to take the fail over. And then if so, you could actually click this next and you would have to establish a connection to that secondary and then issue the fail over. And then it would it would uh, perform the failover, and then it would take a little bit of time to actually uh, get things back in sync again. So you would see that uh, the, the 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 mode switch from primary to secondary for each of the replicas, and then it would take a certain amount of time before all of the databases were back in sync. And really, it's going to depend on what was going on at that time. So that's uh, that's a real quick run through of what an availability group looks like in Management Studio. Really appreciate you guys watching, uh, and I definitely appreciate the, the comments. So keep the comments coming, the questions coming, and uh, I'll be glad to uh, reply and try and put something together for you. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.